Welcome to the Git Blue package board. The idea behind this board was basically to, to kind of find out um, so where so Git Blue package during the last years got quite some, some features here and there. And so the idea would be to find out what kind of features you're using and what kind of features you're actually missing at the moment or which kind of features basically don't work as expected for you and how they kind of more hinder your workflow than, than support it. And maybe during this kind of um, learn about the, the, the different workflows that are there at the moment. And um, so just to, to get into it, the idea was basically to find out so which are the most commonly used tools from this package. So who in the room is basically using the git build package to command itself? Probably about everyone. And um, import orange for importing origin of tables. And so who's using git people? So those of you who are not using Git people or are using S-Build or? Yes. Okay. So because I would love to hear how you're doing the S-Build integration because I think it's not perfect at the moment. So maybe. Pretty, pretty good actually. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but we don't have minus minus Git S-Build. So you, you're doing minus minus Git, P, Git builder is S-Build or? Setting the builder equals S-Build. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 I don't use the integrated version, just plain T builder. Okay, yeah. yeah me too. Yeah. Me too. The set builder equals set. And is there a reason for that? Like, so I dislike the default of having always uh, the text set after P builder and should be one. I think that maybe it shouldn't set a text after it, but, but yeah. Well, uh, maybe it did in the past. That was something I was annoyed with, so I went back to P builder and yeah, basically I'm again. using git build package only with dash dash git tag only. Okay. After the build. Yeah. Okay. If I'm satisfied. Okay. So, so you basically not building with git build okay. package at all, you're just invoking P builder yeah. directly. Okay. That's what yeah. I do yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I could yeah. exactly yeah. this way. So typically I build a lot of times before I'm yeah. satisfied. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yeah. And um so what, what kind of <coughs> thing, like, when I use the builder or people directly, which kind of is, is um, the, the thing that takes most of the time is like unpackaging all the dependencies, so are you using like kind of several change routes, like with pre-installed dependencies, or are you just... SSD and waiting for it, or even TMPFS. Okay. So, um, so who, who's using the patch queue handling? I think this was the, the end of the last thing from... Okay, that's a lot. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Much less people than um, than using the above tool. So who's using DCH to generate the change log? Okay, that's much more people actually. Um, so who's using GPP pull and clone? That's only very few people. And I'm missing push there. Yeah, I, I, I noticed actually. <laughs> so, um, so who's using the import DSC or DSC stuff? I have to use that. Yeah. yeah, specifically <laughs> regularly. Okay. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. When uh, I created a repository for the first time, and yeah. we to start using GPU. So basically, I'm using it pretty often to work on patch packages. I um, I usually don't work on like on security updates or any news or something yeah. like that to, to to get a version and to maybe get some history to find to find out if I don't find any version control. Mm -hmm. And Kali, we're using it to keeping track of the Debian the Debian branches that can manage back on the. <coughs> okay. So we, we do we yeah. keep on the yeah. say Debian branch yeah. equal Debian yeah. and then we do our work on Kali branch. And so you're going so so if um in Kali if a package has um is in Git version control, you use that one or are you always using for DSC? Well almost always using for DSC except for stuff like Debian and Star or and okay. which has yeah. which will be Debian specific. So who's using create remote repo for creating remote repositories? That's not very that often. often. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, you, you don't do that yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that's the new GPT config command to find out about configuration settings. Uh, so that's Never more useful during the or something. Like that. I think I requested that, but I haven't noticed that it's there yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it doesn't matter. I'm using it now. So. <laughs> okay. Um. Um. So anything like 
And so we heard that GPP push is missing basically, so anything else that may basically you just think is missing as a SQL command, like some yeah. Yeah. Well, there are a few wrappers around uh, GBP in the, used in a, a package Perl team. Mm -hmm. um, they have a, we have a tool called VPT, Debian Perl team, which works similar with the subcommands. And it has, for example, also an import oric subcommand, which calls GBP import oric, but also tries to figure out if there's an upstream JIT repository. Uh, which will then be written down into the Debian upstream metadata automatically and then pulled into with the upstream repo um, option and just everything set up for using that feature. Okay. So I can imagine there are maybe more wrappers around uh, GBP in that package Perl tools uh, package where features may, be, may, may move over to GBP proper. Yeah, or maybe make, making their making their known more widely or something like that because yeah. if they're working well. So you're basically pulling in all the upstream git if it's available. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Which I and think quite nice because it's two steps at the moment. I'm using DPT push, uh, which is what I would like to see yeah. here, already for non perl packages and works well for me. Yeah. Because it looks in, in Debian GPP conf what's the format of the text and only pushes Debian's text, not upstream text. Okay, that's so. quite useful then. Because, yeah. Okay, um, then um, you, um, the other thing um, is like now we had all the commands, and so I kind of listed things I use very often. Um, so I'm usually um, importing all the um, original tables using um, <coughs> GBP import org minus minus use scan. DKG mentioned that before. Um, I think that's actually um, very nice, especially if ups, upstream signs its releases, then it can also, also this is uScan's job then to ver verify the signatures. Um, if not, um, you can just pass it the, um, the URL, so it will just download the tab one and import it, so you don't have to do that in two steps. Is anybody using that, or, or, are you getting, or is everybody using uScan anyway? I'm using okay. that quite often. I'm, I like it really a lot. I'm using it as TPT import already. Okay, so that's the wrapper again. Okay, okay, yeah. Still. <laughs> Just a very stupid question, maybe. I do use import or but from the git plane. Is that the same or not? Um, so, um, git import or? Yes. So, so one thing we, we did for Jesse is just like remove all the git parts. So if, um, before that, we had GBP import org and git import org, and we kind of dropped all the git parts, and there's only GBP not import org now. So, so git import org doesn't work. Sh shouldn't be there anymore. anymore. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's kind of the change because we had kind of we had tools that the new tools only had the GBP part, the old tools had both, and now we have the three years of transition or something. We dropped all the git. <laughs> so if I do the on my chassis to get something, then it's still yeah. valid for your. Yeah. Um, one, one question there. So now, if you use GBP build package, that's some kind of double. Double. Thing. Yeah. Will there be build package being the default without every without sub anything? I, I, I've been actually thinking about that, but but then we had one exception, and I didn't want it to call just GB. So because or not just G, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> would become very short and it could come up with anything else. And actually, if not absolutely necessary, I don't want to go through another name change again because it okay. just kind of yeah. causes renaming bugs. And uh, um, for people having business scripts, it's just annoying. Um, <coughs> one thing I use quite often is like with GBP PQ import is the time machine option, which basically uses your patch queue. And if it doesn't apply on the head, it just goes down back in history until it finds a point where it applies. Because sometimes you have a patch queue which is outdated, and then you kind of import a new tarball, and your patch queue wouldn't apply anymore, so you can just go back in history, find the last time, and then use git rebase. Um, that kind of makes it kind of simple. Or if you have a package from somebody else and you don't know where it would apply, you can just use that one. And the three just says go back more, no more than three commits and fail if it doesn't apply anything there. So you can use 100 to find out. Oh, that, yeah, and, and, or, or the package is quite small. Yeah. So it does it uh, linearly? Uh, going back? Yeah, so it basically goes back on the dead branch. That's not a bisect. 
No, 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 it, it doesn't linearly. Because usually it's like, so the, the usual use case is like, you have, a, you have an up-to-date patch queue, you import a normal um, ORIC, you import a new ORIC call and just forget, forgot to update. You, you pull from the new upstream and yeah. it gets a lot of commits and... Uh, yeah, so if, yeah. so if you're if you're having um, if you're having up, upstream in, in like the upstream history there, so actually we should maybe edit make it possible to have Isaac as well. That would make it quite nice. That's true. Cool. Um, so any volunteers for these kind of things, just just let me know. Um, but but I think especially if you if you have the upstream history, Git this will speed up things a lot. That's, that's um, what I'm using. Oh, sorry. Should I wait for mic? Uh, I think if you speak up loud enough, it will be picked up by the camera. Yeah. I think so. Okay, I thought. <coughs> so with this time machine option, uh, how do we choose the descendant to track? I mean, if you have a upstream Git repository on a branch, and uh, you also check in uh, tables and upstream, yeah. uh, upstream branch uh, into the upstream branch. Then uh, your, your merge into the Debian branch has two uh, ancestors, and uh, the upstream have also has two yeah. ancestors. And if you go the right way, then it's, tr it's true that you, you only have to go back like three commits to have your patch queue apply perfectly. But if you go the wrong way, then uh, <laughs> it won't yeah. ever apply, or, or will apply after 200 commits. Yes. So, so usually, if you um, if you use like like um, git import oric to to import the the tarball, the Debian branch is your left hand parent, so it just goes down the left way at the moment. So it's not very clever, like trying different possibilities. Just takes the first parent any mm -hmm. anyway. And if it's not there because it merged with some other tool, then it won't find anything at the moment. There is no way to tell. If no, not yet. To go so, outside. yeah. So, the, so um, the basic idea of matching it here was exactly that. So, if, so if, if nobody else besides me is using it, then it's perfectly fine as it is. So, if you're using it and it doesn't find the history, then we should just fix it up and please file back. And then. Uh, I wanted to use it because uh, I forgot to check out the patch new branch yeah. before importing the new app. Yeah. And uh, then I just didn't dare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, sure so. so, but if you have a repository where it doesn't work, then maybe just publish it somewhere if possible and then we can just kind of I find out. Try, but yeah. uh, okay. no. um, other questions or so this is the boss so you, it's fine if you, you're just um, discussing between each other and I'm just um, sitting here. Um, I'm having a more general question. What about uh, if you are your own upstream? Sorry? If you are your own upstream. It's not uh, some remote code that <laughs> you have uh, some small script you want to maintain in a Debian yeah. package and just build it from Git. Um, there's no import, no upstream, no use scan. So no, you, but you don't need to. So, so what what I usually do if I'm in my own upstream, I'm so keep. So if I don't wanna wanna keep the Debian history in just one branch, I, I usually just do two. I do my master branch with the upstream development on, and I have a Debian branch. Yeah. And when I ever do an upstream release, I just merge it over yes. to the Debian branch and build. Okay. That's the, the way I do it at the moment, so mm -hmm. that's, um, and then that basically brings me to the next thing. So, um, but nevertheless, you might want to have like um, a pristine tar capable tar wall. So when I build like packages where I'm own, my own upstream, um, I use git pristine tar commit, so it will just kind of like um, commit back the the um, the pristine tar history of that branch. So if I want to re regenerate it at a later point, I can regenerate an M5. Um, identical tarball so that is actually for especially in these cases or when you don't use any upstream tarballs at all um, git pristine tar commit is kind of your friend here because it just kind of um, saves you the extra pristine tar commit yeah so we've been talking about um, gbp config and build uh, gbp config before um, there are two other commands which came um, up before um, in, in the in the, in the workflow part, which is um, GPP import DSC and import DSCs, which I'm mostly using for the for NMUs and these kind of things, and this will be kind of partially superseded by dgit because if you have a git view on the repository, you can just use dgit directly. Um, so, but it's supposed to, 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 to stay here for for um, for a long time, and if, especially if Kali is using it and other there's usage outside of Debian, um, 
and it's fine anyway. Um, so there's batch completion at the moment at, and there's set shell completion because some of the options are quite long and sometimes you have to put a branch name there and then you don't want to remember how the branches are named. Um, but the set shell completion is currently unmaintained and I'm not using set shell myself. So I wonder if there's anybody there who kind of want to pick up the set shell. Well, it works for me so far. Okay. Um, maybe it would be a good point to put it set shell upstream then. Okay, so they are maintaining upstream completions or? A lot of. Yeah. And um, usually the rule of thumb is if the um, software upstream is maintaining it anyway, it's better there. But if it's not maintained uh, properly, it's probably best maintained uh, with set shell itself. Okay. So um, we can have a look uh, to make a, a move over. Yeah, so maybe we can, because I can't even tell if it's like upstreamable code or if it needs a complete rework or something like that, so... Yeah, well, um, I'm packaging Z-Shell in a team with... Well, there's even one more member here, <coughs> but that's not my part of expert yet, ties, um, so... Yeah, but it would actually be nice, because at the moment, it's, I think it's just broken, I think you reported it, is, is that right? No. Yeah. And so, um, okay. it would be nice Didn't to have that yet. Yeah. Sorry? I haven't noticed that yet. Yeah, okay, it we need a... Okay. On, on Jesse it works fine, maybe on something new. It's, it's yeah, maybe it's just broken and unstable. Yeah. So, um, some of the recent means, like, since the last time I talked about Git package, like which I think was in New York a couple of years ago. So, there's, we had this before, we have the one, one TBP super command now, which, which basically wraps everything else. Um, we have the TBP config command. We have this, which is not that old. So um, um, Raphael proposed like a, a, a Git naming scheme, which I think w would be actually a nice thing to discuss here because um, I think this is kind of import important to downstreams who look at, at our history and kind of important for, for us if we clone another repository and then um, want to want to kind of find the, the actual branches the, the work is being done on. And so who, who knows about that for team? Um, so that's a bit, okay. That's no, what do yeah. you mean by no? Not yeah, so we're some of that discussion. Yeah, so. okay. Because um, I think, with, like, with most of the repositories you enter have kind of are kind of using different themes, and um, I think what what is proposed in Dev 14 makes makes a lot of sense in, in, in many many situations, and so the first idea is, is basically to put everything into the Debian namespace. That's basically step zero of it, if I understand that correctly. So, so all the Debian related work, the upstream work will, will stay in an upstream namespace and the Debian related work will, will stay in the Debian um, namespace. Or Rafa, do you want to talk about it? Or because I think you know it much more better than I. Or? Well, <laughs> yes, uh, the idea is, as you said, to not mix up too much because the, the need for the bit package to use the master branch with Debian packaging is a bit hurtful when you want to import the upstream git property to the true one. It's even hurtful if you're your own upstream because yeah. you, have, you always have to think the other way around. Uh, and so the idea was to standardize the name of Debian branch, Debian tags and stuff like that uh, to be able to share easily git repository between Debian and Kali for my, for my case and also with the upstream repository. Uh, so there is some discussion. I, I agree with you. It makes a lot of sense, but uh, not everybody agrees. Uh, still, I think it's, it would be nice if Git build package would default to yeah. this naming chain. And uh, I don't know if we'll be able to convert all the tools to follow it. But uh, uh, since Git build package has the largest database, at least I think so, uh, it's a good first step. Yeah, so uh, I should yeah. basically do, do a new round of discussion in Dead and Dead, but I did not manage to do it yet. But uh, I committed recently is, uh, the results of the last set of discussions. Mm -hmm. so, so, maybe, so, yeah. so maybe it would be actually a good step to like kind of have in the in the git build package configuration like at least have a configuration which does like you only have to command out some lines to get a conformant Naming yeah. at the moment, and, and, uh, and then announce that the default will switch in, I don't know, 
<laughs> when it is being abandoned for something uh, better. There's, there's a few behavior changes that can, that can make it easier to, to switch quickly. I, uh, typically, uh, it, it can assume that the current branch is the Debian packaging branch if there is a Debian directory instead yeah. of complaining that uh, it's Debian, Debian branch setting yeah. that does not match. Right? Or rather, the default value does not match. Yeah. If you set it in debianjbb.com, you should respect it, but if it's not set anywhere, yes. uh, the, the default should be. Okay, so we yes. just leave it undefined. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I also had once uh, this experience just a second, this because if you have for some reason different Debian branches, then it's strange. You somehow merge between the branches, and you always have to, to take care for this particular entry in gbb.com. Yeah. And this is a little bit strange. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and by a default policy, this would be amended. And a similar problem I, I eat every time is that uh, while well, I'm working in it, I had it a few hours ago, I was working on this route. Uh, I want to import a new action version in some in Action, so I use GD, GBB import already. But since the default of Debian branch is master, it, it will check out master and try to match the. Action branch master, but I actually I want I want I was importing a separate upstream branch because I wanted for a separate event branch and I forgot to to, to and actually I think it doesn't even respect uh, when you say uh, keep, you keep the event branch on the GPP import already. It does. It, it does. does. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. But uh, since I forget it, I forget it. Uh, it picks the wrong branch and. So would you? So the default should be to merge on the branch you're on. Or well, the default is probably that <laughs> there should be either no default. So no, the default behavior, not the default value. Just the default behavior would be to to merge on the branch you're on, or uh, if it's a packaging branch, I think so. Yes. Yeah, sure. You can make some sanity checks, like yeah. looking for a Debian directory and these kind of things. <coughs> uh, but if it's a packaging branch, then you can then you can have a Debian a GBT comp there. So it's not a problem if you are in a packaging branch. But uh, if you are in any other branch, then you can get into trouble. Yes, except uh, it's just annoying to add code the current branch name in, the, in a file, because when you merge it in a, somewhere yes. else, mm -hmm. uh, you have to update it every time. Mm -hmm. Oh, not every time, but... Uh, I, yes. I don't it's get it. Uh, it, it. If you add the, the name, of the current branch is debian slash gbp.com and if you merge this branch in another branch which is uh, compatible let's say uh, another work tree of the same same branches uh, it will complain anyway I, I think you will have to that have option just as documentation for what branch I'm going to eventually merge this back into and then I pass dash dash get debian branch equals like yes. every time like yeah, always, yeah. always explicitly, even though the, the value's there, it's just for documentation. Mm. Otherwise, yeah, you have to change everything. But, but usually, yeah, yeah, I, I put only the upstream branch that I'm tracking in the Debian GDB dot com. So when, uh, when I maintain Django 1.6 and 1.7 separately, I, I want to update the, the upstream branch separately, so I take the time to, to, to write it down, but I don't see the need to write down the current packaging branch. And so, what about the, the upstream namespace? So, we, I think the dev 14 at the moment just says you use like, like something like 1.12.x if you're tracking the um, 1.12.x yeah, release. It's three from, uh, I mean, today for different packages, fine for most packages. And as soon as you need to track multiple upstream branches, and, and the idea is to, to use something below upstream slash, yeah. and you pick what you want. <coughs> There's a default suggestion to be. A name based on the version, I like to say, but yeah. with a dot x for the last number. But, uh, but you're free to use something else. Yes, yeah, so, but basically it would be nice to standardize there or something else. And I think that the problem with the current default is like if you, if you start with upstream by default and then you do an upstream slash or something else, it will kind of mess up the people's repository. So, it, so the, the question would be should we then go for like upstream slash? Whatever, then by default, and what would that mean? So, <coughs> yeah.
Um, yeah, so but what Git build package can do is actually it can try it from the branch and it can try to clear up the distribution to build for. So if you say it's just like dev 14 and it, um, then it will try to find a pbuilder environment, which is kind of, and, and you're on a branch called Debian Experimental, then it will just find, try to find a, a pbuilder environment that's called Experimental. And if you're on a SIP branch, it will find SIP, and if you're on a, a Jesse branch, it will find Jesse. Find a few weeks ago it didn't work at all. So then show me the then file back, please. Because I'm using it all day. Really? It should be nice. It should work. So, so what was the problem actually? It, it, it basically couldn't find PBuilder. Uh, I, I wasn't using the embedded PBuilder. I had on my own environment. So that might be the case. Yeah. So, but did you use Git PBuilder before at all, or did you use Git Git, Git PBuilder? Um, um, I got defined builder inside the config. Okay. Yeah. So that. Doesn't make a difference. So, but then we should have a look maybe and try to figure it out. Yes, some 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 other things we which are still ongoing and which I kind of hope to finish is like so we are, have some like in, there's a fork of Git build package which allows you to build RPM packages. Is anybody using that here? Yeah. <laughs> anybody else? So <laughs> actually, just to, I checked what I wrote. The default suggestion is to use upstream slash latest. Okay, latest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, because we have parts of this RPM support in in the Debian package already, we also have a spec file, so you can build these things like in RPM packages. So, if you are kind of in the situation that you have to kind of build Debian packages on on Fedora or whatever, you can just use that one to build an RPM of Git build package. And um, like kind of kind of getting the rest of the tools um, merged is kind of ongoing at the moment. And um, yeah, we have some other changes like bear repository support, which is um, like so that you can import like tables into a bear repository, and we have detailed chat support, with which you kind of need when you're building a Jenkins and have these kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, there's this merge mode in place. Yeah. Um, it was mentioned before, I think, in the Skillshare. But uh, what is it? So um, I think yeah, um, the idea is basically that you so when you when you merge a new upstream version and you have that on your on your upstream branch then basically what you what what you sometimes what you want is like you want on your debian branch you want exactly the upstream version plus your own debian directory so you basically don't care if there's any merge working or anything else you don't care if upstream has a debian directory though you don't want any merge conflict caused by this so it basically just picks the newly newly imported upstream version and puts that on your debian branch and just adds your own debian directory wait i was missing that thanks yeah okay and um, so we might need some more tools, like maybe to move over the Debian directory between um, different directories. But I think that sometimes it makes it much easier because if you have Debian and stuff in there, it should hopefully help. Um, yeah. So as I said, ongoing changes at the moment are Python 3 support and um, merchant final RPM support. We have a work in progress branch which kind of builds and runs the tests with Python 3, but um, I've not really used it myself yet. Um, so if anybody kind of wants to jump in and says Python 2 to 3 porting is the nicest thing in the world, then you're more, more than welcome. So it's just a question, what do you mean exactly by support to provide an IPA actually for for for, for, for Python 3 applications which are based no, no, on no, 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 basically to, to so um, to code migration. That, that's no, yeah, so the code package is written in Python and it's kind of okay. uh, at the moment it runs with 2.7. So and it's, a, it's about migrating it build package. Yeah, itself. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah, and and the other part as well is like about working in like the parts of build package RPM to um, to be able to to, to build RPM packages. Um, the, the RPM work was mostly done by Markus Bethun, which I think talked he talked about post uh, post time a couple of weeks ago. So, um, yeah. So what I'm currently working on is like kind of. What import or what what really is bad about import org at the moment? If you run out of disk space or these kind of things, then you have to kind of rewind all the branches yourself. And um, the idea is basically to be more clever than that and just clean up after yourself. If if you, if you fail between the different steps, like importing the table, merging to the branch, creating the text. Um, yeah, so so that's basically so the, the 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 worst thing usually is like pristine tart eats up all your temp space and then it fails and then you have to go back and um, that's basically the mo motivation for for adding that. Well, um, my common failure is that the merge fails at the end. Yeah, so we hopefully have that resolved now. Yeah, well, 
I learned that just now. Yeah. So, um, but one thing I only noticed quite late is that if I I can um, fix the upstream branch, it usually argues about the tech. Yeah. But uh, I never noticed that it uh, will also do the pristine tar again. Yeah, exactly. So that's basically what pristine tar does. It doesn't care about what's on the branch. It just does it again. And so the, the idea is just to, if, if this fails, just clean up. Great. So that cleanup thing is implemented or that's coming No, that's, that's the current work in progress. So um, that's the, what, what I've been working on like yesterday evening um, for half an hour. And, um, but that's basically the next thing I wanted to add because otherwise it's kind of annoying sometimes. Um, so tag, check the tag that you would want to apply in the end. That, so sometimes I uh, uh, actually got a successful uh, import but for whatever reason, for instance, because I uh, do uh, uh, repackaging of my upstream tarball, and I decide that my uh, repack tarball is not the one that I want to uh, use, but I repack it again, I can use the name again, but sometimes I've got the, the tag and then the import fails because the tag already exists. Yeah. So that you know immediately from yeah. the name, so yeah. you could easily check that. Yeah, so we could ch check that in advance, that yeah. the tag already exists. Well, yeah. the tag already yeah, so, and so and if you can, can um, come up with anything else that is interesting. Maybe more more for documentation. I mean, there's, there's pretty good documentation, but uh, I think from, from where I come, a lot of people ask about, ha have a hard time understanding the workflow. Yeah. Um, most of the workflow is very well documented on your website, uh, but uh, I don't think uh, in the Debian packages um, everything is well documented. I mean, the workflow part is very yes. well documented. Yes, so I think there are, there are parts missing. So I'm not, not that much of a good documentation writer. So if anybody wants to kind of jump mm -hmm. in here and, and document the, the workflow, it would actually be quite nice because um, that's, I think that's mm -hmm. really something that, that, that it could improve on. And I, I think the, the manual doesn't have a single picture or something like that, where you have a tree, which how it looks like, and this kind of thing. So. Um, if there are any volunteers who kind of like to write SGML doc book stuff, then <laughs> um, that would actually help a lot. Otherwise, I, I just think it, it won't happen in the near future because um, I, I try to write some documentation. I think from the from if you hand it to somebody and he has to understand it, I feel quite badly. So um, that would actually be nice to have somebody jump in there. Um, yeah. In front of the uh, rollback, it would be nice if the um, if what um, Auric tar um, the first time uh, option would be item potent that I it checks okay um, I want to import this version and I ha already have this tag and checks okay it it's my file that I want to generate the same that is already in the, in the co uh, committed then I say okay it's already committed and matches and I'm done yeah so but basically that I would see that in pristine tar. Like not not doing the same work over again. That's the interesting tar, but I think it's unmaintained currently. Yeah, but then that's that's a bad thing by itself, I think, because yeah. if we're using it that that much, then we sh kind of have to pick it up in some way. It was uh, yeah, uh, not terribly important, but uh, it would be convenient if uh, import DSC would support the Austin VCS tag, which import Okay, does. yeah. I think there's a bug for that one. I don't Actually, know. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, just one more thing, uh, uh, back to the time machine. Uh, I just uh, got the impression that maybe it would actually make more sense to go back on the upstream branch if you if you have failing patches, because the failure is caused by some upstream commit. Yeah, so, but so, so, so the idea behind the time machine thing is like to find the last Debian version where this patch queue fits to because that's your view of things at the moment. We, we could, could actually go back on the yes, upstream branch and find I, I, a place I, where it broke. Yeah, yeah so, so it, it may be easier to fix the breakage if you, if you can resolve the, uh, against the upstream yeah. patch. Which, which yeah, at least there's an other possibility that would be. So, so some things we're not very terribly good at, and there are bugs as well. And um, I'm <coughs> kind of basically usually very happy with what with, with what Git AM does when I, when I export the patch queues. But at the moment, um, GPPQ doesn't really um, 
respect any depth three header. So if, if there is a depth three header, like which says where that, that does something come from and is the file upstream, and you import it and you re-export it again, then it will just basically forget about most of the stuff that is in there. Um, there is another tool for similar purpose called git deadcherry yeah. in the git pkg package. Um, that one has recently got support for storing exactly that, those inform this information in git nodes. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So maybe that's something for git build package patch q2 to store the depth 3 headers in nodes um, because they get updated after time anyway. Uh, so like forwarded no to yes or yeah, yeah well uh, other bug reports for example an Ubuntu bug report is added so yeah well maybe that's helpful there too. And then the node is attached to the one commit that has the patch basically applied. Yeah, yeah. well um, yeah there's a bug report against I think we, we already made a bug report against Bitgit. To, to fetch build nodes, package yeah. to f uh, fetch the yeah. nodes on pull. Yeah. Uh, I think you have all the information or references in there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I um, saw that it's basically kind of needed for that cherry, but I didn't figure out that it's needed for the nodes. So. Mm -hmm. One thing could we make a uh, build package to ignore all the .pc directories from build? Um, at, at which place does it care about? Like so uh, if you one git build package, it will say uh, there's uh, there are uncommitted changes. Okay, so uh, okay. There's a dot pc folder. Yeah. So basically, so you're able to build from a patch tree or what? what Just is able to build uh, uh, a okay. project which is using build. Yeah. If, uh, as soon as you rebuild, even if all the patches get unapplied, yeah. then the dot pc folder is still there. Okay. So you have to use git ignore you at the Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that okay, might yeah. run, that might make you run into other problems. Uh, if you're using git ignore new all the time, you might end up uh, just uh, yeah, 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 ignoring so other <coughs> things that should be have been committed. No, I was just wondering what the current workaround is then. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, yeah, basically, I think we could because um, let's. So is, is is anybody going to to file this box then? Because otherwise, I will forget anyway. Um, can so. <laughs> So one thing that came up, I think, in the in the, um, in the in the skills exchange session before is like um, like supporting like PFSG clean branches and, and these kind of things. So is, is anybody kind of like some something he wanted to share how he cleans up his um, his history? Uh, no, no, it's, it's not its history. It's tarballs from um, from non PFSG free stuff like images and these kind of things. Are you using filter? Or? Uh, yeah, I uh, use uh, the EP5 uh, specification um, for the probably the next iteration where you can specify file excludes yeah. and specify all the f files in the tarball that you don't want to have in your uh, DFSG free uh, tarball and uh, you scan um, can handle that. handle that and download the tarball throughout these unwanted files and Repack them even so fit ni fits nicely into the workflow without changes to the build package. So is, is this already in, in Jesse or in unstable? Because I remember some discussion that there were work parts missing somewhere and I'm not sure about the current. I think it just works. It works? Oh yeah, very good. Then perfect. Um, yeah, then there's sometimes the. So, is anybody maintaining packages with multiple upstream tarballs? Does that. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no support for it in, in the package at the moment, and I kind of. Don't. Didn't come up yet with the same workflow, so do you want to kind of use sub modules, or want to use. Do you want to use detached histories for different tarballs, or do you want to use um, git subtrees, which is the new hot thing, or something like that? Because I don't. But, because all the time I think about it, I think if you do it like you get it just with different trees, it just gets more complicated than just using sub modules and building one tarball. So, um, so well, some support would be really nice because uh, at least uh, in my experience, uh, there are many GitHub projects uh, which tend to embed other libraries. I know it's bad, but uh, still uh, 
sometimes I want to clean the package even if it's not truly clean. And uh, they have the get model data in the GitHub repository, so if you could uh, generate, uh, what? Yes, a uh, 3D top zero field source package with corresponding uh, uh, supplementary tarballs, that would be nice. So, but basically, what would you suggest, like using one repository and not caring that they are kind of different projects and, only, and caring at the build export time or using sub modules or? Uh, because that's basically the point I usually then give up and say, okay, no, fix that somebody else has no problem because I, I, I can't come up with something. Yeah, same. I did not think about it too much, but. Um, uh, Sorry. I, 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 I guess we could admit. Yes, sorry. Who wants to go first? So maybe, maybe because you started. We, we could have uh, multiple upstream branches, one for for each component. Um, and uh, the thing is, it, it needs to be thought a bit la larger. Than maybe also with use can to see how we can track some. But uh, in the short term, what would be nice is simply to be able to take an existing Git repository uh, and convert from bits submitted and generate the, the, the supplementary, supplementary target. We only have, we only track the reference, uh, but uh, the missing parts should be able to be generated from the Git submitted. I think so. Yeah. Well, my my case is, is a bit per, is a slightly perverse one. I I just have a, a package with many many similar tarballs, no no processing almost no processing needed. I just need to scroll them over, create many many very similar packages for them. So I I don't care how the the tarballs are stored. I can store them externally. I need to figure out how to fetch them. I just need to, to store the, the few bits uh, uh, firmly. I just don't want to get the build package to get in my way. Okay. And it does at the moment, or...? Uh, from the little I remember, it, I think it does. Uh, SVM build package had to be patched, had to be slightly patched for it to work. I think git build package uh, uh, gets in my way, but I'm not really sure. It, it, it's getting the, the targets. Yeah. That's the main problem. So maybe we can just sit down and try. Okay. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So um. So what what so that would be the the DSG branch support, multiple tables, and um that's what you wrote um wrote already. Like if we have the RPM support, we actually want to support mock for building like yeah. Korean RPMs. That would actually be quite quite nice. So having something similar to the P builder. Um. I so I will put this somewhere so we um. You can download it. I kind of so there are unit tests within um, Git build package. So if you want to kind of submit the patch, then um, you can run the tests. Um, and extend the tests. Also. And yeah, so um, <laughs> and extend the tests and cover your your new use cases. Thank you. Um, there are some component tests um, which you, which are ca currently stored in extra sub modules. So you can do Git sub module update maintenance in it, and then the component tests will be run as well. Um, and you can build the documentation in kind of in the case you really want to. Um, Add some workflows and these kind of things um, directly, and then it will just generate the HTML pages and the main pages. And there's some epidoc generated things for the for the um, for the Python um, parts, especially the repository related commands are actually documented quite well. So it might kind of help if if, if you want to contribute to some patches. So that's basically everything from my side. Time over. Time over. So no other questions then. <laughs> So if, if is it one is it one minute or over? Okay. <laughs>